Can mute Chawa attend his request? Ngai and Nemo. All respected participants in this meeting, uh, we, it will be greatly appreciated if you can at, mute yourself in the meantime. Good morning and welcome to Vigyan Uttal. 
organized by Mizoram Science, Technology and Innovation Council under Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. My name is Zora Moiralte, and I have the privilege of being your host for today's program. On August 15, 2021, India celebrated her 75th year of independence. To commemorate this milestone independence, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi launched Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav to infuse new energy and consciousness and showcase achievements over the past 75 years. Throughout this year-long Vigyan Uttav, the Festival of Science, initiated by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, Emerging Science, Technology and Innovation, STI ecosystems in each state and union territory, along with their contribution towards Atmanirbar Bharat, will be highlighted throughout monthly themes. We are all indeed unified with our desire to actualize a self-reliant Bharat. To commence the Vigyan Utsav, this month's theme is STI institutions in the states. Today, esteemed institutions in Mizoram have been invited to speak on their activities and contributions throughout uh, towards the STI ecosystems. Without further ado, we would like to invite engineer H. Lal Somliana, Chief Scientific Officer and Member Secretary, Mizoram Science, Technology and Innovation Council uh, to deliver the welcome address. Sir. Thank you, host. Respected participants, invited speakers, my colleagues and others. Today, I welcome you all on this celebration of 75 years of India's independence organized by Department of Science, Technology, Government of India in collaboration with Mizoram Science, Technology and Innovation Councils, MISTATE. The Government of India has initiated Vigyan Utsav to celebrate and commemorate 75 years of independence India with a team of science, technology, and innovation, ecosystem for Atmanirbhar Bharat, to celebrate this Mahotsav. It has been decided by Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, New Delhi to instigate a one-month, one-team initiative through State Science and Technology Council's network. As a part of this initiative, Mizoram Science Technology and Innovation Council MISTIC is organizing the STI ecosystem for Atman Nirbhar Bharat today on the 23rd of September 2021. This program is being telecast live on SSTP web portal and new YouTube MISTIC channel. The Mizoram Science Technology and Innovation Council MISTIC since its inception, that is 1985, has progressively advanced and has taken up various programs and projects such as science popularization, organizing congress, workshops, seminars and webinars in various scientific fields, science and technology interventions and awareness ranging from intellectual property right to climate change, apart from the business as usual mandate. The Institute has also been proactively collaborating with various academic and scientific institutions and non-governmental organizations, local communities as such for the development of science, technology and innovations in the state. It has also initiated science, technology and innovation needs mapping for the state to identify their lacuna. MISTIC has also identified local innovators and even promote them up to the national level. Lastly, but not the least, I once again welcome you all in this today's program, which will include presentation from various science and technology institute located in different parts of the state. I wish all the best to the speakers and a fruitful deliberation to you all in advancing science technology and innovation for mankind. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, indeed, the first step is uh, knowledge and also support from uh, very important key stakeholders throughout the government as well as private areas. Um, thank you so much again for uh, the welcome address. Uh, next, we would like to invite Pulal Malsoma Batswao, IRS, Secretary Planning, Science Technology Department, Government of India to deliver an address. Sir, over to you. Thank you. Uh, 
good morning to all the participants to this uh, participants of this vigyan utsav it is a great pleasure for me to have a chance to speak uh, to all the men and women of science and then the department of science and technology government of india has taken up a very good initiative in bringing all the science technology and innovation institutions of all the states under this umbrella of vigyan utsav which is a festival of science which is part of the 75th independence day celebration and i would uh, congratulate the department of science and technology and its folks in the states the science and technology councils for taking up these programs as we know today's uh, topic is science technology and innovation ecosystem for atmanirbhar bharat through atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan the government of india is campaigning hard for self reliance towards this end science technology and innovation has a very important role to play as is evident from history for instance and to name a few green revolution in the agriculture sector has made us self reliant in food grains and the advancement in rocket science that has been made by our scientists has made us self reliant in this field as well with self reliance self confidence naturally follows and with that we can aspire for greater things so we may think that the big achievements in science technology and innovation can only be achieved by big institutions but when i think about this the one thing that comes to my mind is that it is the individual person who matters after all when we talk of green revolution the first thing that would come to mind is uh, mr ms swaminathan or for that matter the mr apj kalam for rocket science therefore we as institutions need to provide the right ecosystem for science technology and innovation so as to enable individuals with this kind of aptitude to flourish we may need to identify them and incentivize them so that they realize their full potential towards this end we can start small but we must think big and make a dedicated effort to scale fast towards this end i believe that we have uh, made a start here in mizoram in this regard to share from what i know which is at the moment rather limited uh, since i am also relatively new to the post under mizoram science technology and innovation council which is a government society under the direct reign of science and technology government of mizoram we have an innovation facility center which was inaugurated in december 2020 it is equipped with machines that will enable our innovators to put in shape the ideas that are on their minds the center is definitely a part of the ecosystem that will foster science technology and innovation it can enable the innovators within the state to provide solutions to problems that are unique to the state which in turn will make us self reliant and as i have mentioned earlier make us confident to accomplish larger things now it is our responsibility as institutions that the center plays the role that it is meant to play and with a team of dedicated scientists working on it i believe that we are scaling fast towards this another example which i would like to highlight is the work which which are being done by mizoram remote sensing application center which is another government society under the directorate of science and technology with a team of dedicated scientists working under it it has provided solutions in various fields ranging from agriculture or horticulture to disaster management they are becoming the institutions that the government would turn to to provide scientific input through remote sensing applications 
We also have the Mizoram Science Center under the Directorate of Science and Technology. Under this center, we have a science center with a planetarium here in Aizol, and another one is shortly coming up at Lungle. So once the pandemic is over, I think these institutions will serve very well in creating the ecosystem of science, technology, and innovation, especially among the students of the state. So as we all know, the state of Mizoram lies in the remote corner of the sub-Himalayan ranges, sandwiched between Myanmar and Bangladesh, with long international borders of 728 kilometers. There are many avenues where research and development in science and technology can have positive impact to tap the potential of the state. For instance, the state falls under the Indo-Burma biodiversity hotspot, having rich and unique bioresource, most of which are yet to be explored. Proper and sustainable utilization of these resources can have manifold benefits for uplifting the socioeconomic status of the state. A research and development policy is required where in a symbiotic relationship between the state and the central can unfold the natural, the, the natural richness of the state. So I look forward to this day with great enthusiasm as many of the esteemed science, technology and innovation institutions of the state come together under one platform to discuss how we can build the right ecosystem towards self-reliance. And as I have mentioned earlier, we can start small, but we must think big and make a dedicated effort to scale fast. So, the organizers here have uh, invited participants from other councils across the country. And I hope this will benefit uh, the entire people who are involved in this uh, endeavor. And when we share our knowledge, our experiences and our ideas, I hope something good and concrete will, be, will, will, will come up. So I convey my appreciation to all the speakers in today's meeting for sparing their valuable time and knowledge towards the success of the Vidyan Utsaf program. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, what a great reminder that with self-reliance comes self-confidence. And from what you've just highlighted, uh, your, the department, uh, various uh, key departments in Mizoram are invested in promoting science, technology, and innovation in our state, which is extremely encouraging for our future leaders and our future innovators. Thank you so much, sir. Next, uh, we would, uh, let's uh, all uh, take a look at a documentary that has been prepared by Mizoram Science, Technology and Innovation Council that highlights the contributions towards uh, the innovation endeavors and SGI ecosystems in Mizoram. Our future innovators. Our Thank future you so innovators. Okay. Good morning to one and all. Next, uh, we would... Uh, so let's first... Uh, all, we'll start off with uh, take a look at a documentary a that has Mizoram. been prepared Mizoram by is a Mizoram state Science, in North Technology India, and Innovation with Council. With Aizol as its seat of government and capital city. The, the name of the state is derived from uh, Aizol, uh, innovation the self-described name SGI of native ecosystems in Mizoram. And Ram, which in the Mizoram language means land. Thus, Mizoram means innovators. land of the Mizo. It is the cornermost landlocked state sharing borders yes. with three uh, we would, of the seven uh, sister states of Northeast, uh, namely Stadra, Assam, and Manipur. This state also serves seven neighboring states with a border with the neighboring countries, Mizoram and Capital. Mizoram covers an area of the state is made right from Mizoram uh, to 1087 square kilometers, and about 90% of the state is forested in the Mizoram language. The Mizoram runs through the state nearly of the Mizoram. 
It is according to most then the living centers so where has a population of about 10 lakhs. The density of the is not this name, it's the two person per square kilometer. The literacy rate of the German military was 91 to 91 percent. Higher than the national average of civil war. covers an area of the second base in all states of India. 1 celebration and observance of important days relating to science and technology like national science day national technology day national mathematics day etc are organized by misty in collaboration with science and geos institutions line departments as part of celebrations several activities have been organized such as felicitation of prominent science citizens scientists and academicians state level science quiz essay writing competition state level mathematics competition science exposure tour innovation challenge exhibition of science projects and grassroots innovations and nature study etc the Mizoram science congress the biggest scientific gathering in the state Mizoram science congress is organized by mystic under various teams in collaboration with institutions and science ngos in the state the Mizoram science congress is held by nearly since 2016 with a prime objective to provide a common platform for the scientific communities researchers scholars innovators and students in the state to showcase their research and activities in doing so it promotes and promulgates promulgates science and technology in the state by blending the knowledge and ideas emanating out of academics and innovative minds in a festive manner so far three editions of Mizoram science congress have been organized Participation in national and international events. Mystic actively participated in several national and international events such as International India International Science Festival, Indian Science Congress, Global Bio India, Technology Conclave, etc., wherein various activities and development of the state in the field of science, technology, and innovation are showcased and highlighted. Technology development demonstration and deployment. The Council is playing a catalytic role in nurturing the skills of grassroots innovators in the state. It extends financial and technical assistance for development and upscaling of indigenous technologies. It also provides platform for local innovators to showcase their products by organizing exhibitions, technology conclave and competitions. Innovations and technologies developed by local innovators are also demonstrated and propagated for use by public through demonstration programs. Besides the technologies developed at local level, the Council also studied and identified different technologies developed by various national R&D labs such as CSIR, ICRDA, etc. that could be deployed based on state-specific needs. Now moving to research and development. Under research and development program, the main focus of the Council is science and technology for the society. Community-based environment conservation and ecotourism project is one of the projects taken up by the Council. It is funded by the state government. The main objectives are to conserve natural environment in the project area, attraction of tourists, and create employment for local people. The project is implemented by Mystic in collaboration with local NGO, 
which is Ilong Village Ecotourism Development Society, Avetsok. Next, moving on to enhancement of livelihood options for rural women. The project is funded by Department of uh, Science and Technology, New Delhi Seed Division. The main objectives of the project are to provide technology input for production of healthier food products, enhancing skills of women in production of food products at local or domestic levels, uh, technology input for providing poultry and pig farming, thereby producing better quality and quantity outputs, and creating women network or self-help groups for their skill development. The project area is uh, Zemabok, which is a very urban area situated on the eastern outskirt of Aizol. More than 70% women of the selected target are unemployed, either at government or private sector. A mystic has collaborated with local NGO and MHEP, Mizoram Major in Kompol, which is the largest women organization in the state. Next is water based, uh, water based orange preservation is funded by the state government. This water based preservation technique of orange project is set up at Tingsai village now in uh, Natyal district. And the project has the objectives uh, to develop simple and working water based preservation technology for orange to create awareness among the people about the importance and usefulness of simple and innovative means of preservation for various seasonal foods and fruits of Mizoram. The project is now completed and under trial run. So does briquetting and charcoal making plan. Under this project, machineries for production of briquette and charcoal are installed at Baktong village, Mizoram. The raw materials used are the piles of sodas generated by various workshops of Baktong village that were used to be thrown away as waste. The project was inaugurated in 2019 and is now in operation. Next is the Center for Mushroom Production at Saitua. The project is funded by Nectar, an autonomous scientific society under the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. This project aims at providing livelihood opportunities for rural masses through mushroom production. Center for Mushroom Production is established at Saitual, in Saitual district, in which state-of-the-art technologies for spawn production and mushroom cultivation are installed. Training for selected beneficiaries was conducted in collaboration with Pachung University College. Using facilities available at the center established, then technology and know-how will be disseminated to other groups of society. In this way, the project will continue to reach hundreds of indirect beneficiaries after official project activities are completed. It is envisaged that this project will result in mass production and also production by the mass, which will ultimately provide better livelihood opportunities for larger group of society. And so here is a list of another uh, research and development projects that has been uh, taken up by the council. Establishment of digital planetarium at Lungle, Mizoram. The work is going on. And pre preliminary study for scouting of indigenous graduate, grassroots innovators and technologies of Mizoram. It was conducted where various innovators in different parts of the state are identified. And local innovative pilot projects uh, funded to grassroots innovators for hand pressing phone charger, thread winding machine, power hammer, torsion machine, roller setter controller, lifting of water using power of water flow, zero weight electric, uh, transformer constant power supply, wind blades suitable for hilly area. The council has also taken up projects for development of portable low cost induction heater, portable agar batty round stick producing machine, solar driven uh, hybrid dryer. Uh, the council is also uh, undertaking a research project in investigation of anti-cancer properties of malutas, ro roxbarginas, and phytochemical screening and identification of secondary metabolites and nutritional profiling of alocasia fornicata. And the council also uh, did a project on mapping of science and technology needs. So moving on to the cells and centers uh, functioning under the ages of mystic. First, we have the Patent Information Center. The Patent Information Center, Mizoram, since inception, has been playing an active role in promoting of awareness, creation and protection of intellectual property rights in the state among students, local innovators, entrepreneurs, and other stakeholders, and has been sensitizing thousands of people in the state through workshops, seminars, and lectures. Also, it has provided assistance to the local innovators, businessmen, authors and artists in filing their patent, trademark and copyright applications, conducting patent and trademark searches, 
giving lectures to college students in IPR, the PIC also strengthens itself by undergoing training sessions outside the state and attending national seminars, webinars, PIC meets, etc. It collaborates with various institutions of the state and form IPR sales through which many activities were undertaken. A remarkable activity of the Patent Information Center was the successful registration of five Mizo traditional court, namely Puanche Maram, Tolokwan, Ngautekep, and Pondum under the Geographical Indication Registry, Chennai. Now all the five Mizo one has a GI tech. The PIC has also published intellectual property rights booklet in local language, which can be download, downloaded from the council's website. Next is the state climate change cell. The Mizoram state climate change cell was created in 2014 with financial support from strategic program, large initiatives, coordinate actions, enabler known as SPLICE and climate change programs, uh, division of Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. The Mizoram uh, state climate change cell has been given the responsibility of a leading role by the government of Mizoram to implement the mission objectives of the strategic knowledge mission under the Mizoram State Action Plan on Climate Change. In general, the climate change cell conducts scientific study of climate change issues, including analysis of meteorological data, vulnerability, impacts and risk assessment, climate modeling, and simulation of future scenario change in different sectors. It conducts research mainly for database and information generation of, for the state. The cell also conducts capacity building, training, and awareness programs for different stakeholders, especially for adaptation strategies in response to climate change for integration into developmental activities by including policymakers, concerned departments, government officials, academicians, media, NGOs, students, and the local masses. The publications of the state climate change cell can be downloaded from Mystic website. Next is the Innovation Facility Center. This has been described in uh, brief by our uh, secretary. Innovation Facility Center, IFC, is located at Mizoram New Capital Complex, Kadla, with an objective to provide assistance to the indigenous technological innovators in nurturing and safeguarding their skills, including intangible properties, thereby promoting technological intervention in the state. IFC is meant by scientists, engineers, and technical personnel and hosts variety of mechanical and electrical machineries and equipment. The center was inaugurated in 2020 by Honorable Chief Minister of Mizoram, uh, Puzoram Tanga. The center is now functional and undertake various activities. Next, we have the Schedule Tribe Cell, ST Cell. ST Cell is established with financial support from Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. It aims at providing science and technology-based solutions for capacity building and sustainable development of schedule tribe communities in the state. So with that, I conclude the, the commentary of Mystic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the interesting presentation on the various programs spearheaded by Mystic. Uh, initiatives are, we've uh, just thought yeah. that all of the initiatives are certainly broad based and involve all levels of the community. I'm confident that initiatives will continue to positively impact all members of our community and uh, continue to take on um, the continue to spearhead initiatives for the SDI ecosystem in our state. All right, as we uh, mentioned earlier, uh, when the program began today, uh, various STI institutions in Mizoram have been invited to speak on their activities and contributions toward the ecosystem uh, in Mizoram. Uh, to begin, I would like to invite Professor K.R.S. Sambasiva Rao, Vice Chancellor of Mizoram University, to share with us the various uh, initiatives that are taken up by MZU. Sir, over to you. Hello. Hello. Yes. Good morning, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very loud can and clear, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Welcome.
Okay, sir. Hello. Can you hear me, madam? Yes, we can hear you now, sir. Hello. I have some microphone problem. I am just talking with my without audio. Okay. 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 Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Because I am traveling somewhere in a uh, in, uh, not fine meeting. Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Professor Rao, we can CDK. hear you. Yes. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, this is the precise right. A lot of people is coming. Um, I've been participating through mobile uh, because of my other meeting for this. So because I connect with everyone, uh, but I if I am personally there, uh, so we are on uh, different stakeholders in the but the science technology various activities in Mizoram uh, to reinforce it. Uh, it will be very good that uh, we are progressing in Mizoram, particularly Mizoram University is progressing very well in the past few years and uh, we have been engaged in uh, various research activities in uh, Mizoram University through various research projects from different funding agencies, DST, DPT, ICMR, Minister of Environment and also CSR and EGC and uh, we have um, uh, and recently incubates a Devo that is not the central PST incubator and we have to into the and a lot of recent programs are organized. We start to maintain for the DST incubator and like working on and also manufacturing technology and we are also working on different apps related to the disability I think we have may have just okay there we go yeah uh sir your audio is on mute the brother the sir the started and again like that so uh good opportunity uh collaboration with uh various stakeholders uh, education system particularly schools and college I've been insisting on uh, uh, for in, uh, inspiring activities for the school children, but uh, we have recently different occasions that uh, will be inviting many students to come and work in our school and higher secondary, so that the Yes, sir. Hello. Okay, sir, we have you back again. Actually, the internet, is getting, the internet is getting disconnected. So, uh, say that we will be happy to collaborate with the schools and colleges, and uh, every year we can invite some students to join in our uh, um, uh, summer uh, training program uh, and summer training program uh, at Mizoram University. I just want.
Hello. This joins our university. Early uh, high school and uh, best friends. Uh, come for some summer some training program in various departments of uh, botany, geology, biotechnology, and also environmental science, uh, engineering, uh, various engineering branches, food technology. The students get uh, training in, during summer. They will get inspired and they will be motivated for taking science as a profession. This is what actually the future generation of students actually they need to be motivated. This has to be uh, discussed at uh, um, a level of a state government that how to sponsor some students uh, during the uh, winter program or during summer program. Students can come and uh, 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 work in Mizoram University with various professors for uh, two weeks to three weeks. Uh, what is the science and how the science has been progressing? What kind of research activities can be taken up by the students after and uh, science to be taken as a profession, it will be very good for the students to be motivated. This is actually been practiced in many countries and also even in India, Indian Institute of Science and other uh, central organizations are practicing students to encourage them to take up science as a profession. The Mizoram Science and Technology Center, along with the school education and the higher education, they have to choose some uh, every year, some students like uh, uh, 40, 50 students uh, in from different areas and encourage them from the school level, eighth class or ninth class onwards up to plus two, they can be given training and motivation at uh, university. University will be very happy to use some kind of motivation for the children. And even 40, 50 students at a time, we can organize them in our university during the winter program or even summer program. Uh, we can have a, a motivation program every year. This will be very good that science will be taken as point by the young students after knowing the developments on science and technology in the world, worldwide. This may be thought and uh, every year Mizoram Science and Technology can be thought and uh, choose some students and uh, they sponsor us to, uh, they can sponsor them to just, we don't need charge anything. Let them come and uh, uh, stay in our university at uh, that particular uh, transport charges may be required. Otherwise, that also we can provide some one bus uh, during the vacation period. And that with that student, every year, fifty students to hundred students, we can motivate them for taking science as challenge. So the students can become very good uh, citizens of the country. This is what my feeling is. Uh, so this can be thought, and uh, we need to have uh, this kind of motivation. As uh, particularly the self reliance India Atmanir Bharat Bharat, we could just take Mizoram. Mizoram has become one of the best example for uh, proving itself as Atmane Bharat uh, activity because they are able to uh, synthesize masks, face masks, they are able to synthesize uh, the uh, PPE kits and they are able to synthesize all the sanitation kits and everything they are able to do during the COVID-19. And uh, one of the best example for Mizoram uh, has been proved that it is a self-reliant uh, state and uh, very able, well able to control the COVID-19 during the last one and a half years. So we continue this and we continue to collaborate with Mizoram University and with Mizoram State uh, for various activities, particularly for encouraging uh, school children and college children for doing something. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope I'm, because of the poor internet connectivity, I'm not able to uh, concentrate on uh, joining in the whole program. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you, especially we, we understand you have a very tight schedule while you're on tour. We appreciate your taking the time to, to spend some, uh, some moments with us for today's seminar. Uh, I completely agree with Sir Rao that uh, future generations need to be motivated and we have to inculcate a love for learning from a very young age. And for that exposure is key. Uh, what a great, great invitation from Sir uh, to welcome high school students and college students for their summer and winter training programs. I'm sure many uh, high schools and colleges will be taking Sir up on that in the future. Thank you again, Sir. All right, uh, next we would like to uh, welcome Dr. Ai Shakuntala, Joint Director, Mizoram Center, Indian Council of Agricultural Research, Northeastern Hill Region from Kolasi, Mizoram, uh, to, to speak upon their uh, activities and their various endeavors. Uh, Ma'am, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Am I audible? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Can I uh, share my slide? I have uh, some slides to be shown. Is it visible, my slides? Yes, ma'am. That's okay. great. So I'll uh, then uh, let me start. Yeah, uh, first, um, chief guest of today's function, Apu uh, Lalwal Shoma Pachau, IRS Secretary, Planning Department, uh, Government of Mizoram, and Chairman Apu Aits uh, Lal Somliana, Chief Scientific Officer, Member Secretary, Mizoram Science, Technology, Innovation mm -hmm. Council. Mm -hmm. And uh, other officials from the Science and Technology Department of Science and Technology, Government of Government of India, and other delegates, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Mizoram University, Dean College of Veterinary Science, and delegate from the Mizoram Remote Sensing Application Center, and all the organizing team from DST Government of India, and Mizoram Science, Technology, and Innovation Council. And everyone present on uh, today's program, a uh, very good morning to all of you. It's a very great privilege for me to be a part of today's program. And uh, I'm happy to share a brief information about the activities of ICR Mizoram Center for the overall development of agriculture in the state. So our center was established in 1975 uh, to cater the research needs of the state in, in agriculture, horticulture, animal husbandry and fisheries. We have uh, a land of 32 hectares for our research uh, field and establishment. Our main objective is that to overall improvement in the agriculture and increase the crop productivity for overall development in the state of Mizoram. Through a various approaches that mainly we are targeting through the zoom improvement and hilly ecosystem, Productivity enhancement, crop intensification, valley ecosystem, agrobiodiversity exploration, crop health management, improvement of livestock and fisheries production system. And finally, uh, it goes to the technology dissemination to the end users. So under the Zoom improvement, what uh, we have also studied some of the land use pattern in Mizoram and different system like forest, then uh, zoom land teak and where rubber and arcanut are grown. Under this, like soil organic carbon and the soil biological properties are higher in the uh, forest and it's lower in where the teak is grown and the zoom land. If zoom is practiced, then our level carbon, carbon pool is quite low. So uh, optimum of 10 years secondary fellow land is minimum for, uh, for keeping the, for using the zoom land. These are some of the findings. I'll skip these two. Okay. Then uh, we have this dragon fruit is uh, planted in high, uh, upland as well as in a terrace uh, or a semi uh, circle uh, terrace system. So we have developed the is is a production technology which using some of the fertilizer, farmyard manure, and the vermicomposting, including the disease management practices, which increases the growth, flowering, and the fruiting performance of dragon fruits under Mizoram condition. This was a very good uh, finding from us. This has been communicated to the Department of Horticulture. Then as in the upland, uh, maize is the suitable crop. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, the sweet corn cultivation was very successful in the in Mizoram for earning, uh, for getting a very good remuneration. And when we intercrop with other high value crops like uh, vegetables, like uh, broccoli and all, it was remunerative very high. It's going VC ratio of more than three. So this is another option where after the maize in the upland, I'm talking about the upland now, in the upland, after the maize, if uh, farmers can plant, this soybean, which is a source of as an oil seed as well as this product can be prepared. So some of these suitable varieties we have screened this out of these four, uh, three are giving very good yield. So we can very much go farmers very much go for this one so that their cropping intensity will be increased. Instead of planting one crop, it will be double crop. 
So from 100 to 200, it will come up to 200 propylene density. This is the main target for us. Then where that in the zoom land, zoom land means in the upland where the high value crops cannot be cultivated, we can go for the uh, this tuber crops like uh, cassava is a good variety, high yielding variety, uh, Sri Vijaya, elephant, Pudyam, and Colocasia. These are also quite successful in Mizoram condition. Then if we go for the Delhi ecosystem, mainly Mizoram uh, is a rice grower and the rice is the main uh, food for the people of Mizoram. So we are having here a uh, bowl rice, which is little glutinous, as well as the some uh, non-glutinous rice varieties. This RC Manipur 12 is a very short duration variety. It's, it's only 105 to 110. So after plantation of this one, we after harvesting maybe June to September, by August end or September, this will be harvested. Let after that farmers can easily go for their rabi vegetable like a winter crops. So it's very promising variety and another high yielding variety RC Manipur 13. It's giving up to six to six point five tons. When we compare the local variety, local rice is giving hardly 1.5 to 2 tons per hectare. So this kind of varieties we have introduced. Uh, so it, this will definitely help our state for, a, for making self line. Another technology is that crop diversification using rays and sunkel wet technology. This is mainly done in the marshy lands where water is stagnant. So you cannot go only for one crop. So we are making one uh, little bit higher, another is down. In the down one, uh, rice can be cultivated. In the higher one, vegetable can be cultivated. This will uh, bring the high productivity as well the water use efficiency will be higher. Then after the rice is harvested in that land, we call it rice fellow. Here, if we uh, cultivate this lentil, it's a uh, that red dal, which is mostly maximum people consume this dal in Mizoram. So if without any much intervention in the rice fellow, if we cultivate this uh, dal, its production is quite good in compared to other mainland. It's giving quite a better yield. So uh, if we can provide some uh, milling machines, so uh, Mizoram can produce very much this kind of dal for our estate. We have uh, already identified three varieties. These are very good for Mizoram. Then uh, in the after rice, we can also go for oil seed and other pulses like peas and the uh, mustard. This is the vegetable growing in the rice fellow. After harvesting the rice, we can go for vegetable cultivation. But for this purpose, we need some irrigation facilities. So uh, for the farmers, we need to give some pump, water pump, pipe and all, then uh, they can very much go for vegetable cultivation. They will, that will give them to 100% propane intensity. Then spices is hardly grown in Mizoram other than coriander. So last year we have introduced seven spices. Spices, So its performance is quite good. It's coming up. So this is an, another option for the farmers. They can very much go for the spices production. So if we go for agro biodiversity exploration, so many have been talking that uh, Mizoram is a biodiversity hotspot. So we have some that uh, information on this. We have characterized seven maize landraces based on their agromorphological characteristics. Out of this MZM17, uh, which is a uh, popcorn variety, and it's having a quality of multi cop. One plant is having three to five cops. Then another one, MZ11, is a high yielding clean corn. This can be used, multi-purpose use for food as well as for the fodder for animals. So these two varieties we have released by our Honorable uh, Minister of Agriculture in the beginning of this year, in March 2021. Uh, this is a popcorn variety. We call it uh, Mizo Pogzo 1. Then it was named as Mizo Pogzo 1. Second is the Mizo uh, Mimpui 1. Okay, this is a multi-purpose cob, can be used for food as well as for the, this, one, this was also released as a state variety, Mizoram state variety in the March 2021. And then uh, for the French bean, we also have so much of biodiversity in French bean in the state. We have studied 52 coal type common French beans, 
uh, that uh, has been grouped based on their fingerprinting group into four. And out of this, we got it a very interesting uh, variety. This is a purple coded and the pole type. So uh, through the mass selection, this we got it from the Sertan and Colossic area. But this also has been released as a state variety uh, for Mizoram in 2019. So that seed has been multiplied in different areas of the Mizoram. Then this uh, Mizo Sili around 72 land races we have characterized. So there is a, a huge scope for crop improvement. We still need to work on this. And then 97 mango zamplasm we have characterized for its uh, sugar content, acidity, ascorbic acid, and keratinite. So it's having two major groups and another four subclusters. So still we have much scope to go ahead. Then if we go for the underutilized crop, like uh, this very potential wing bean, it's from Mizoram. We have a nine uh, zamplasm. It's showing very big, very uh, tender. So we can still go ahead for characterizing all these things. It may come up as a state variety. Then, it, these are the mushrooms, wild mushrooms. We collected around 65. Uh, still, we have more than, I think, 100, 200. But out of, out of the 65, 38 were edible. And 13, we got the accession number from the uh, Directorate of Maize Research uh, from Solan. Uh, even we are trying for culturing this, uh, cultivating in our uh, system. This is community, so we are trying it. Okay. In terms of disease management in uh, plant, dragon fruit, these are the new diseases. It was immersed. Uh, so we have identified three diseases as well as managemental practices. Then this is the fruit flies, which are commonly come in the fruits and vegetables and all these management practices we have done with the parapheromone traps, which has been released in 2018. Then uh, we have also participated in pole army worm, which was a very uh, devastating disease in the uh, maize. So we have surveyed 45 points in Mizoram, covering 271 farmers. So maximum farmers, their crop was uh, infested 10 to 40%. In livestock and fisheries sector, uh, mainly we work on the disease, the monitoring for the pig diseases, viral and bacterial. In the viral, we found some are 45% uh, of the cases are misinfection and other bacterial diseases. We also work for the conservation and the propagation of the indigenous animals for the for goat and uh, for the quality seed production and supply to the farmers. We procured the parents line from Hyderabad and manage here and produce the seeds and supply to the farmers. There's eight riverines of Mizoram uh, we have uh, assessed for this diversity. Fish diversity, this maximum fish uh, is Cyprinidae family. Then we also have the vulnerable fish species, endangered, culturable, as well as, as, well as the ornamental fishes. These are the, uh, our resources in our rivers, Mizoram rivers. We have disseminated for technologies like vermi composting. It's very successful in farmers' field and low cost rainwater harvesting technology. Then, resource conservation means using the straw as a mulching without any extra uh, water during the ravi time. So, this was quite successful in the farmers' field. Then, integration with the fish, poultry, and the fish and teeth. Then hatchery units uh, for quality seed production and even uh, entrepreneurship development for the farmers, women farmers, uh, giving them a reconnect leaflet molding machine using the agro byproducts and making it a very eco-friendly uh, plates and cups and plates. Yes. Then this uh, farmers producer group, what we are targeting is that the rice uh, growers, after rice, they kept the land well, wherein. So if we provide them a small um, uh, power tiller and water pump, so in a custom hiring basis, in a community basis, they really work hard and increase their cropping intensity from 100 to 200. Then there's the farming systems uh, for their sustainable income source, combination with the agriculture, horticulture, and uh, other trees and with livestock. So giving a good uh, remuneration for them in a sustainable mode. In this way, we are also working. 
Along with this, we're also doing a little bit of seed production, mainly this uh, Zorin bean, that trans bean we have released, that is in uh, collaboration with the Department of Agriculture under the registered growers. This grower has been already taken by the uh, government of Agriculture Department, government of Mizoram. So you produce in a large scale, and then uh, maize seed production in large scale, rice production, seed production in large scale in collaboration with the Department of Agriculture. Then this is the Gramin Krishi Mosam Seva. Under this network, we have uh, more than, is, uh, now it's 28 in the March, now we have more than 30,000 registered farmers. So through the SMS, we are giving agro advisory services in agriculture and allied subjects. All the crops, all the animal, fish, and all everything we are giving this SMS in local dialect. So these are some of the our future trust will be working on the soil and water management, then establishment of farming system models, then uh, exploration of his biodiversity, quality seed production, improvement of fisheries and animal husbandry. So we uh, will be happy if we collaborate with the science and technology in our future uh, approaches. So these are the some activities we have been carrying out for the state of Mizoram. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity for sharing our activities. This is our unit, uh, I share Mizoram Center at Colossi. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Shakuntala for the truly eye-opening presentation. Uh, we got to see a glimpse of the research your team is involved in, which greatly, clearly greatly impacts the productivity of our farmers, which will in turn lead to a self-reliant Mizoram. Thank you again so much for your time, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ma'am, anyone screen? screen. screen. Uh, uh, answer your screen. screen. Yes, sir. yes, yes. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next, we would like to invite uh, Pimping Kanpui, Principal Scientist, Mizoram Remote Sensing Application Center, uh, to share the work that their center uh, does to, to spearhead the SDI ecosystem here in Mizoram. Ma'am, over to you. Okay, thank okay, you. Thanks. Respected chief guests, Pulan Malsoma Patuao, IRS Secretary Planning Department, and our chairman, Pu Ixla Som Liana, Chief Scientific Officer and Member Secretary Mystic, Dr. Diba Priya Data, Advisor and Head Seat, SSTP Division, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, Dr. Rashmi Sharma, Scientist F, SEED, and NCSTC Division, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, and organizing team from Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, and organizing team from uh, Mystic Mizoram. And all participants of this program, uh, a very good afternoon to you all. And I'm, as you have mentioned, I'm Ming Tan Pui, and I'm working as principal scientist here at Mizoram Remote Sensing Application Center. Uh, today, I will be sharing with you all uh, the contrib some contributions of MISEC towards SCI ecosystem. Uh, please allow me to scare, uh, share my screen. I think you can share your screen. Uh, can you try it one more time? Okay. Uh, firstly, let me uh, highlight a few information about MIRSEC. MIRSEC is an autonomous government institution under Directorate of Science and Technology, and it was established in the year 1988 under directives of uh, Department of Space Government of India. Uh, ever since its inception, MIRSEC is the nodal agency for carrying out all kinds of remote sensing and geographical information system related projects for the state. And it provides uh, valuable spatial and non-spatial data to the state gov uh, government, central government and different uh, academic institutions. 
The center is uh, well equipped with uh, a team of thematic scientists uh, using today's advanced remote sensing and GIS technology to carry out higher levels of mappings and intends to expand its areas of activities to cover wider applications of space technology for the benefit of the state. Now let me give a, a brief story of space technology in India. Uh, space technology in India is an integral part of science technology and innovations in India. And the history of India's uh, interest in space technology and space science is as early as 1960s when national community uh, for space research was formed by the Department of Atomic Energy. Subsequently, uh, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, was set up to develop uh, space technology and its application to various national tasks. The development of India's space technology and program dates back to 1980, when it successfully launched its own satellite Rohini one from uh, Sri Harikota Island. Since then, uh, space technology in India has evolved and advanced so greatly that India is now one of the top countries in space technology. Uh, the nation's two primary interests are satellites for remote sensing and communications, and ISRO is success, uh, successful in establishing two major space systems. One is in set for communication, television, broadcasting, and meteorological services. And the other one is uh, Indian Remote Sensing Satellite System, IRS, for resources, uh, monitoring, and management. ISRO has developed two satellite uh, launch vehicles, as you can see from the picture. This one is uh, the PSLV, that is the launching vehicle. And then GSLV to place INSAT and IRS satellite in the required orbit. Uh, here are the pictures of uh, the two satellites. This is INSAT for that one. This one is uh, used for uh, communication and television broadcasting. And the other one, this cartosat, this one is a uh, remote sensing satellite. This, uh, these uh, satellites are used for various applications on the ground. Uh, the remarkable development in space technology during the last two decades have firmly established the immense potential for the optimum utilization for taking up many application projects in various sectors of national development. Uh, remote sensing and GIS can have a wide uh, range of ap applications uh, like in the field of agriculture, forest, soil, water resources, land use, land cover, geosciences, environment, ocean, uh, oceanography, and disaster management and disaster warning system also. Remote sensing uh, and GIS application here uh, at Mirsec started with a simple map making and resource inventory and statistics derived from these mapping exercises. Uh, the one which I showed on the screen is the basic uh, methodology of remote sensing and GIS uh, application. Uh, as I have mentioned before, we are dealing with different teams and subjects, and the maps and data prepared at MIRSAC has great contribution towards effective governance, like monitoring of projects, uh, DPR preparations, geoportals for visualizing uh, maps and data. Uh, 
here are a few examples of uh, the wars which have been carried out at Mercer. In the field of land use and land cover mapping, uh, MUSAC has been carried out different projects. And then the one which I'm showing right now is uh, land use, land cover mapping, which have been uh, done at the period of, uh, at an interval of five years. Uh, this one is a uh, nationwide project. And this uh, data, which we have been generated from this project is very useful for various line departments and researchers from universities. Uh, as you can see from this uh, picture, this one is the satellite imagery, and these white patches are Joom uh, cultivated area. And <clears throat> this is uh, the interpreted, the classified image. As a, this is one is this picture are corresponding. These white patches on the satellite imagery after interpretation, this is the generated data. And then uh, after uh, extracting this spatial data, uh, we can have all the required information like uh, the actual situation of the land and its area as well. So all the uh, generated data as well as the statistics gives uh, important information which can be used for uh, various purposes. And secondly, uh, MISAC has been engaged by forest department a few years back uh, where forest density and other forest cover has, uh, has been studied and generated for their working plan and inputs. Here in these studies, uh, studies have been uh, done, uh, conducted in the riverine forest and uh, reserve forest area and then other uh, administrative boundary and located uh, locations have been generated using this remote sensing and GIS technology. And this uh, really helps uh, the forest department in formulating their working plan inputs. Uh, uh, and then which ca uh, can be done in a systematic manner and then within a short period of time. And then MUSEC is also uh, done some studies uh, in the urban areas also. And then this uh, studies is very important for operational urban planning activities. The extent of urban sprawl within a period of time can be studied. And since all the GIS features uh, can have rich attribute data, it can be used for uh, operational level as well. Uh, several uh, geological studies has been uh, conducted at MUSAC, and then this uh, geological mapping has been done with focus on uh, based geomorphology and other geological data. When this data are integrated with other GIS layers like contour, present land use, land cover, drainage, etc., we can use it for mapping of uh, risk zone and other related disasters as well. And all this information gives synoptic view of uh, the hazard assessment and proposing mitigation measures. Uh, remote sensing and GIS data has been effective in mapping of ground water prospect sites and quality assessment. And these data are essential information for activities related to identifying sites for bore wells, hand pumps, et cetera, and studies on groundwater recharge capacity. And it has a scope for monitoring as well. MIRSEC has done these studies and all the reports and maps has been handed over to PHE department for the uh, developmental works. As There are uh, several projects uh, carried out in MESEC which are concerned with land and water resources planning, uh, depending on the need of the specific villages or districts and the present situation of the land and water, ref uh, water resources, scientific and systematic planning are worked out and the final 
report along with the maps and statistics are handed over to concerned department for their developmental works and uh, reference as well. And one example I like to discuss with you is uh, there is one project called uh, Chaman, which is a coordinated program on horticulture assessment and management using geoinformatics. Uh, this one is a joint project uh, conducted with Mahala Nobis, a national crop forecasting center, MNA, uh, CFC, New Delhi, and SAC Ahmedabad Space Application Center, and NESAC uh, UMIAM. And the main target of this project is to carry out site suitability analysis for grape cultivation in Champhai district and for cultivation of dragon fruit in Aizol and Sierchi district. Uh, this mapping for suitable areas are done within target areas of shifting cultivation and wasteland without uh, wasting the natural forest. This uh, mapping has been uh, done at uh, the scale of one is to 10,000 and the analysis considers uh, all possible parameters required for identifying the potential areas, uh, which are uh, the criteria are soil, terrain and climate factors. A report has been prepared comprising all the relevant data that is maps uh, showing all the suitable area, which has been uh, handed over to Horticulture Department for Developmental Works. Uh, Mirsek also played an important role for sericulture uh, development, where we have prepared uh, this potential suitable area for planting trees of plants like mulberry and tassar oak, uh, which provide food for the silkworm. This data is also given to sericulture development for the use. Uh, recently, uh, MUSEC has completed one project on the fostering climate resilient upland for uh, agriculture farming system focus. Uh, this project is funded by International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAT, UN, and execute, this has been executed in collaboration with Concerned Agriculture and Allied Line Departments of the state. And the main objective under this project is uh, entrusted, uh, which is entrusted to MIRSAC is to map the current land use land cover of four districts, that is Kolasip, Mamit, uh, Sierchip, and Tampai, and also to prepare site suitability for cultivation of four select, uh, selected crops, which are ginger, turmeric, chili, and rice. Mapping and uh, analysis at the initial stage which has been done at the initial stage of the project really assist the line departments and uh, stakeholders of this project to further uh, plan for their agriculture development and who, which is aligned with uh, the objectives uh, to fulfill the main goals of the focus project that is uh, to increase households, uh, household agriculture income and enhance their resilience to climate change. Uh, to summarize, uh, remote sensing and GIS technology are useful tools for mapping, monitoring, planning, and management of natural resources, infrastructures, assets, utility, and allied decision-making schemes. And the technology serves as a quintessential platform for solving complex problems of the present eras where information and its assessment is required in a cost-effective reliable and time conservative. I think we have, we may have just lost Bimin Tanfui as she was wrapping up her presentation. All right, thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing the various projects pioneered by MIRSAC. 
Uh, I think we all have a new appreciation for accurate mapping, which certainly impacts projects and governance at all levels, as you have shared. Thank you so much again, ma'am. All right, to uh, move on to our final presentation for uh, this afternoon, we would like to invite Dr. Bella Nunzwangi Mar, Dean, College of Veterinary Sciences and Animal Husbandry, Central Agricultural University at CLC Mizoram. Uh, Ma'am, thank you for your time. Over to you. Okay. Yeah. Respected Chief Guest, Pulalmal Soma Pachuao, IRS Secretary Planning Department and the chairman of today's function, Engineer H. Lalsom Liana, Chief Scientific Officer and Member Secretary, Dr. Deepa Bria Datta, Advisor and Head, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, Dr. Rashmi Sharma, Scientist, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, the invited guests, uh, lecturers, speakers, uh, the Vice Chancellor of Mizoram University, Professor R. K. S. Sambasiva Rao, and Madam Dr. I. Sakuntala, Joint Director, and Pimping Tanpui, Principal Scientist, Mizoram Remote Sensing Application Center, and also the organizing team from DST, Government of India, and Mizoram Science and Technology. Technology and Innovation Council, and all the participants who are present here today. I'm very fortunate to have one of the uh, speakers to present the activities, some of the activities of the College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry today. Today, I'm going to present few of the activities which is going on here in the College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry. But before I go on the activities, I will highlight some of the things, what is going on, the present status of the college. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Your, yes. your camera is off. Uh, if you use, uh, you can turn it on. I think I have put on my video. Let me see again. We'll go back again first. Yes, ma'am, we can see your video now. Uh, but your would you like to share I'm your visible screen now? now? Visible now. Ma'am? Uh, Dr. Lan Dr. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. We can hear you, but we cannot. Uh, your video is you not on. You cannot see me. You cannot see me. Yeah, we cannot see you. Uh, is it, uh, is it, can you see the presentation? Can you see the presentation? No, can you try the share screen one more time, please? Yes. yes. Can you wait for me another one minute? I'll call my computer operator. All right, ma'am.
Ma'am, uh, Dr. Uh, one second, ma'am. Uh, one second, uh, ma'am. Is your, uh, is your, did you open your PPT? Uh, you, you, uh, you have to maximize it. You cannot minim You cannot share if it is minimized. Yes. Thank you everyone for bearing with us. Seems we're having some technical difficulties, but I think that's to be expected. Thank you once again for your patience. Ma'am, would you like to continue your presentation? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Now, yes, yes. now, see me, see me. We saw you a moment ago along with your PPT, but we seem to be losing. There we go, ma'am. You're you're very visible like that. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I, th I think, I think, ma'am, uh, your presentation was going quite well. I think I will just, just uh, uh, you know, you know. Yes. Now can you see me? Yes. Your audio and your video is quite clear. Okay. Okay. No, it's already there. Can you see the slides? No, this is Zoom, no? Yes, yes, yes. So earlier we saw your... Yes. Yes, our presenters have the sharing capacity. We saw your... PPT earlier. Yes, uh, uh, if you can click, you click the, the share screen share button. Screen. Yes, now it's visible. Your screen is visible. Your PPT is visible. Ma'am, you have to unmute your audio. Uh, the PPT okay, okay, has okay. to be uh, in, uh, given in presentation yeah, mode. Yeah. Yes, it's oh, visible it's now, good. and you have to uh, do it in the presentation mode. Just click the uh, this thing, this little yeah. button, uh, right beside the uh, bottom, at the bottom uh, right of the screen. It is. We have done it. Okay. Now, whether it's coming out or not. Uh, Ma'am, it's coming. The PPT mm. is coming. 
and then you have to yeah. do it in the i think in the uh, presentation mode uh, you you have to click slide show menu at the top mm. of the line let me try please bear with me please yes. uh, <clears throat> just do it again just share one one more time like you did before Yes, it's coming now. Click the now. Whether it's coming full screen? No, it's not coming full screen. See, uh, can you click the this thing, uh, slideshow button at the top, right beside animation between animations and review? Slideshow. Yeah, that one. Mm. Please, please share now your screen again. Now, whether it's coming all right? No, please share your uh, PPT again. Share it. <sighs> yes, now it's sharing. Now it's coming yes. here. PPT is coming. Yeah, it's visible now. It's great. Mom, it's so, okay like that. is it all right now? Can I continue? Hello. Yes, ma'am. You may. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You may yes. continue. I'm so sorry that uh, some inconvenience has happened. Uh, now I will continue. And first of all, I would like to highlight about the colleges before I come to the activities of the college. And the college, as uh, most of them will be knowing, who are staying in Mizoram, that we are located here at Selesi. Aizol Mizoram, which is about 13 kilometers away from the uh, main city. And we spread out in about 108, 168 acres of land. And the college was established through the amalgamation of the ordinance in 1995, but the, the jurisdiction extends all over the Northeast states which comprise of Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mani, uh, Mizoram, Tripura, Sikkim, and Nagaland. But the college has opened here in the year 1998, and but the first admission of the students takes place in 1997 in West Bengal Veterinary College. And here we have 17 departments and in all the uh, PG program is organized there on, as we have in 15 departments. These are the departments of different uh, subjects under the College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry. And we have mandates of the college to impart education to different branches of veterinary science and to further advancement of learning and prosecution of research on veterinary science and to undertake programs on extension education. So mainly our work is teaching, extension and research work. And this is the administrative setup where I'm heading the college, where there is a teaching, research and extension and under an administration. And every department is headed by the HODs. And we have two advisory committees uh, on extension and research. And this is the setup of the administrative uh, in the college. And we have a faculty of 50 numbers, including me, we are 51. And technical and non-technical staff, uh, we have all about uh, 200 workers here in our college. These are the infrastructures which are available here in our college. And coming to the academic activities of the BBSC and AH course and uh, master's degree and PhD, we have assets from different states of the Northeast. In addition to that, we have the Veterinary Council of India seats of about 12 
12 in numbers here. And from the Kashmiri migrant, we have two number of seeds. And payment seed that is high fee category, we have three numbers of seeds. And altogether, we have 80 seed capacity in undergraduate level. In case of postgraduate uh, programs, we have 68 numbers of seats uh, in master's degree. And in uh, PhD, we have 16 number of seats where the seat uh, is also divided into open seats of 55. And this is uh, the seats which is occupied by the ICR nominees. And so also in the doctor uh, read degree, we have 14 seats. And under ICR, we have two numbers of seats. And this is the student strength now at present. And undergraduate, we have 330 students. PGs, we have uh, 91 students. PhD, 11 students. Altogether, we have 432 students. And we do not have at present international students. And the students of 432s are all residential uh, one. Now, coming to some of the activities of the college on science, technology, and innovation, I would like to highlight that every college, the college is one of the constraint college, 13 constraint college, and in our in Mizoram we have veterinary college, and in Tenzol we have horticulture college, and in in this uh, science stream or the research site, we have the trust areas. We have four basic trust areas where basic research, applied research, and that of the strategic research and fundamental research. And coming to the basic research, these we have again uh, the researchable areas where all the departments will come together and do the research work based on these <coughs> trust areas. These are all the trust areas. <coughs> Apart from the teaching side, we are also undergoing uh, research project where ongoing research at present under IRP, we have five. <coughs> and mm, completed one is, all on, uh, is 84 and under... Uh, uh, ERP, we have the ongoing of 14 numbers and completed, we have 35 in numbers. And what I would like to say is that for this ERP, it is mainly funded from ICR, DBT, DST, uh, and so on. Uh, Ma'am, sorry to interrupt you. Alba, can you please yes, ad yes. advance your slides? I think we're still on slide two, if you can please. Is it? Yes. Okay. okay. Ma'am, you can press the, if you see the right arrow button on your keyboard. Slides is not moving. You can click on now, the down arrow or the right now, arrow. Right arrow. Right arrow. Can you arrow. Like, like, mm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you uh, open the slide which you are sharing? We'll stop the whole thing. No, no, see, uh, uh, on the bottom of your screen in your computer, just click on the slide which you are sharing. It's like a car, an iron car in this player, a dumb car in this player, and it will get right. Keyboard, I can't. Ah, keyboard, I can't. I'm moving, I'm moving. Yeah, I'm moving. Any problem, Niang? Oh, uh, uh, Ma'am, sir, sir, go to slide. Sir, tell me, I will turn in. Oh, Oh, from the beginning, you just uh, start again. Yes. Oh, the can't say, can't be tell you. Sin Ulla. Oh, 
i ka inglaw computer operator himo manipur mi niya sap tumin ang guide te ulok te ulok nga hin can you restart the sharing yes now it's coming good and then if you can do the slide show from current slide can you click the icon yes from current slide yes that one yes click that yes now it's coming or not? Uh, no, it's still stuck on the same screen. Uh, it's not going in the presentation mode. Can you uh, click again from current slide icon? Uh, yes, this, uh, res reshare the slide again. Now it's going off. Yes. Now, can you do the slide so from current slide? Yeah, now this is the current slide which is improvement in the growth of local pigs yes it's sewing right now and then uh can you uh press uh, the next button means uh the next arrow okay. button now it's coming or not to no, the next no, no. slide just uh just uh, not escape. Yet. yeah just press escape uh if it is sewing full screen press escape Yes. This one. So it's not. Yeah. So yes, you can. You can. You can go like that. Yeah. If you uh, okay. push in it. It's yes, not, I think. Uh, so in, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think there is a full screen problem. Yes. 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 That's the thing. So you can okay. uh, continue it like if this. You, yes. If you yeah. don't mind, I'll just go ahead like this. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Oh. Okay. Sorry for the interruption again. Hmm. So among the activities and the achievements, the, I'm going to show some of the slides, or the work which is done by the students as well as by the faculty. And the current slides which is uh, now showing is improvement of the growth of the local pigs that is called Zovo by crossbreeding with exotic large weight Yorkshire. Here mostly we are working on this, for, under this project, there is a work to improve the growth rate, the FCR, the back fat thickness, and so on, we are by crossing the local pig with that of the large weight Yorkshire. And we have also come across to 75% of the crossbred, which is liked by the farmers. And this, uh, the Zovok here, uh, it is a small, uh, uh, small size pig. When we are crossing with the large weight Yorkshire, then it has produced the bigger size piglets where the growth performance is also better than that of the local pig. And those piglets are being distributed to the uh, farmers. And these local pig, we have studied about the characteristics of the local pig and we have registered as a uh, registered breed and it is also recognized as one of the pig breed of India. So we have got the certificate, uh, this I'm showing in 2017. Now coming to the conservation, as the breed was uh, already recognized as the uh, breed, of, uh, breed of India or breed of uh, pig in India, now we have made a target of conservation of this local pig and anatomical studies, how the head uh, is uh, the measurement of the head, all the anatomical structures is also studied and we have also taken care of the physical characteristic of the breed and we are studying on it and conservation of this local pig is going on here in the college. Coming to the nutritional part, here we have lots of uh, oil palm here and the sludge is being wasted. And we thought that the sludge could be used for the animal feeds and we have done the work on it. And we have found that 30% of the palm oil sludge, when it is uh, mixed with concentrate uh, diets of the pig, it was found that the sludge is ha not having any adverse effect and it is having the performance of the uh, pig is equivalent with that uh, feeds which is being fed to the animals. So we have found that the palm oil sludge is very good in feeding to the uh, pigs. And so also the rubber seed meal. 
So the rubber seed mill is also 20% of the concentrate fields. It is being replaced by this rubber seed, uh, rubber seed mill, and we found no adverse effect on the growth of the animals. Among the PhD scholars, she was doing a PhD work on this area-specific mineral mixture. She had analyzed all the feeds which is being grown in all the districts of Mizoram and have analyzed the mineral contents of the soil and uh, also the mineral contents of the feeds and so on and found that the mineral, uh, mineral contents of each and every district and accordingly the area specific mineral mixture was made. And I would also want to highlight that the particular students is also uh, getting uh, uh, this uh, uh, incubated in Mizoram University. And now with the help of those Mizoram University's aid, they are making these mineral mixtures and it is sold out in the market to the farmers. Coming to this very important silage making. This silage is nothing but the feeds which is being fermented under anaerobic condition. And this one was done under one project and they have made a basket with a bamboo and they have mixed this bamboo, uh, sorry, uh, the banana stem and this colocasia and they have been fermented and it is used for feeding of the pigs uh, and at the ratio of seven is to three, they have prepared using a bamboo silo. Otherwise, in the traditional way, they will make some pit in the ground. And this one, it can be easily practiced by the farmers and it can be easily fed to the animals. It is relished by the animals and it is being utilized by the farmers too at the rural areas. And coming to this early pregnancy diagnosis in pigs. This pregnancy of pregnancy diagnosis in pig is quite difficult at the early age, but with the help of ultrasound, it can be easily uh, diagnosed at an early age of 19 to 25 days post insemination, that is post mating. And uh, also that uh, with this, it will, when the pregnancy diagnosis is done at the early age, the economy of the animal's owner is enhanced because there will be a less lost days so that when it is not pregnant, they can immediately uh, inseminate again. And coming to those uh, livestock production side, uh, one for here in Mizoram, the Voxareb, that is the smoke meat, is very common out here. But the traditional smoke meat is not having a long shelf life. So in order to have the longer shelf life, the uh, pork is being smoked electrically and it is also some modification is done so that the shelf life will be able to enhance or prolong for about up to three months at room temperature. This one can be easily undertaken by the farmers too. Then coming to this uh, bio-preservation of chicken breast fillets, uh, fillets to improve their shelf life. Uh, these fillets, the breast muscles of the chicken meat uh, is being prolonged by giving some uh, uh, some uh, uh, treatment and it can be also uh, enhanced uh, the shelf life up to 12 days as compared to the, uh, the control one. So these things can also be taken up by the farmers. And uh, now we are really concerned about the fat, eating of fat. Now in the chicken, chicken sausage also, in order to reduce the uh, reduce the fat intake, they have incorporated some of the uh, things uh, inside of the sausage with the carrot, green peas, and olive oil, so that this one uh, can be also prolong the shelf life and incorporating the niacin, a by uh, a bacteria sin, 
which could increase the shelf life again of the chicken sausage uh, and from six weeks to 10 weeks of uh, time. The chicken nuggets and the patties with antioxidants rich materials. The nutritional value of these popular uh, ready to eat chicken nuggets and patties is also improved with the help of this groundnut and pomegranate rind powder. The product can be well preserved up to 15 days under refrigeration temperature. And very popular one we used to call pork uh, means pig skin. It is that rind, pork rind, and this can be easily prepared successfully by using 40 minutes cooking time, 10 hours drying, drying uh, deep fat frying, and subsequently uh, with vacuum packing machine, it can be packed and this can be stored satisfactorily up to 16 days at room temperature. Now characterization of uh, Animals like uh, cattle is also done in the northeastern regions. And these cattle, the characteristics of this cattle is also studied by a student and it will be, uh, it will be, um, we will be registering this breed and as uh, for a recognized breed. Another work was also done on breed registration. Now, in order to do any breed registration, we have to undergo many studies on this. On the uh, ZOAR, that is the local poultry birds, is also being studied. And uh, uh, this, it was also found that it, has, or it is having that brooding uh, behavior. And we are also trying to get the breed registration on these poultry birds. Very interesting, another work was going on. Now, aflatoxin is very harmful for the ducks. And this aflatoxin, uh, we are trying to produce the ducks, which is resistant to aflatoxin. And the work is still going on, this one. And we are doing it in over uh, uh, injection of this aflatoxin into the eggs. And that eggs is being hatched out which will produce that aflatoxin resistant duck. Now coming to establishment of the specialized diagnostic laboratory for transboundary animal diseases. With the help of the DBT funded project, we have developed one uh, laboratory where with the, for the intra, where uh, all the diseases of the exotic and the emerging diseases can be diagnosed here in the laboratory. And this, from this laboratory only, we are keeping that RT-PCR uh, machine. And for uh, you, I could also want to tell that during that COVID pandemic in the beginning time, uh, we have rendered our help to the state government by lending out our RT-PCR machine uh, for diagnosis of this COVID-19. And we are also happy to lend out our hand to and support, give a support to our uh, state government. This is one of the ointment which is made from herbal. It is a herbal product and it is very helpful in uh, treating this sarcoptic mange. Uh, the sarcoptic mange can happen only uh, in the pig as well as in the dog. If you see that dogs which is having a uh, uh, skin uh, rashing, rashing on the skin, and also when there is uh, devoid of uh, hairs and all, usually it used to be a mange infestation. So this herbal product is being made, and it is called Nim SMR pig. Uh, although it was made for the pig, but even if uh, even for the dogs, we can use this ointment. It is not that much costly. It will be of around 40 to 50 rupees approximately per vial. And these uh, very, uh, very common uh, herbs, which we are finding it in the uh, local areas, uh, we call it Zapanlo and that of the Tlang Sam. They have studied about the wound healing property. And here it is showing that 
for zero day the wound what the condition of the wound and by second day seven days nine days 11 days 14 days see in the 14 days when they are applying these herbs it is showing that the wounds is healing properly Now, coming to that early diagnosis in pigs again, firstly, I was talking about the ultrasonic ultrasonography. Now, we can also detect or diagnose the pregnancy by estimating the serum progesterone. Uh, and when we are estimating the serum progesterone, then we can also diagnose the pregnancy at the early, as early as 20 days post-insemination. And this is also related with the semen collection. Actually, uh, the work was done by some students and then uh, the AI, that is artificial insemination, to do that artificial insemination, unless we collect the semen, it cannot be done. So uh, in other uh, recognized breeds like large white Yorkshire, Hampshire and other pigs, the semen collection was already done successfully but the semen collection here in the case of zovok was very difficult the animal is very ferocious but we have done the work and it was uh, carried out successfully with the help of uh, this zovok uh, boar semen now we i want to highlight that the weaning meaning is the weaning is separation of the piglets from its mother. So in case of the local practice is that the piglets are weaned at two months of age. Sometimes they weaned at 56 days and usually at the farm level, we have weaned at 42 days. But the study was undertaken that uh, to wean at different age. And we have found out that the piglets can be weaned at as early as 24 days, provided some other um, uh, better management is there. Because better management in the sense that we have to give some support, some supplements to the piglets. And when the piglets are weaned at the early age, then they can, the sow, that is the mother of the piglets, the sow we call it, the sow can rebred re at the early age so that the economy of the farmers will be enhanced. And the second point that I would like to highlight is that usually here in Mizoram, unless and until we castrate the animals, we do not like to have the meat of the animals. And castration is a stress to the animals. And we have also undergone one research work on chemical castration, which is quite successful. And instead of undergoing the operation on castration, we can easily inject the chemicals into the testicles so that it will get regress. And the meat quality is also the same with that of the other uh, op or surgically operated animals. Coming to one small quail birds, uh, we have studied something on these quail's performance and we have seen that the zinc supplementation at the rate of 25 milligrams per kg of the feeds could enhance their performance and also vitamin E improves their uh, egg quality and also the supplementation of the turmeric powder can also improve the performance of the quills. And also here I would also like to highlight that when we are supplementing the zinc then it has also improved the hatchability percentage of the quail eggs. Now, establishment of the farmers club. Some of the, not only on, mainly on this research work, we are also doing many works on these extension activities. We have formed many farmers club at the village level and the piglets are also distributed to those farmers club and they are rearing it and at their own level and what I would like to highlight here is that these are the pictures at our farm level, these. And at the uh, farmer's level, we have improved the flooring, the flooring materials with the plastic, uh, plastic one 
so the green color what you have seen is the plastic uh, plastic slats which is provided to the farmers and in that way the whereas the traditional one is this wooden one uh, when we are providing these plastic slats we could found that find that there is an improvement in the performance of the piglets and this is some distribution of uh, some extension work, distribution of chicks. And also we used to distribute the hatching eggs to the farmers. And at the farmer's level, they also have the incubators here. Uh, small one at the farmer's level, they are incubating and hatching out the chicks. Coming to the preparation of the feed block. Uh, Actually, uh, sometimes we used to have problems with the feeds of the animals here. The feed ingredients is being formulated and the feed block is being prepared and the, it is given to the piglets. It is really relished by the uh, pigs. Coming to the disease mapping, here under this uh, transboundary disease uh, study is we have also done the disease mapping. Disease mapping is really important when the disease will occur, where it will be, it is occurring. So disease mapping is done in, uh, from the college also. So the development of this disease mapping has helped in the, uh, in making some, uh, some uh, ready form of preventive measures for the animals. Agro-based agro-advisory system in Mizoram. Uh, this is one of the projects which where we can get all the informations or uh, here in the college itself, there will be some experts available here and the farmers can get re themselves registered and they can take the consultancy from the college itself by telephoning, by WhatsApp and so on. And this work is uh, going on and more than uh, a total of 6,000 farmers have been registered. And this work is going on here in the college where the farmers can get help in the, uh, in this, uh, when they are having any problems with their um, animals. And before I end up my, uh, my talk, I would, I'm proud to tell the audience that one of the alumni of our college, Vanram Himpuyi, she is an entrepreneurship entrepreneurs, and then uh, she is having the Zonu meat processing, which she had established in 2016, and producing sausages, meatballs, meat, mince meat, etc. And she had also employed eight number of workers, and she is also the Winners at Mizoram Micro Startup Capital Competition 2018, Women Category at National Entrepreneurs Award in 2018, Second Runners Up at Mizoram Kailon 2019, and she can earn as much as 70,000 to 1 lakhs per month. With these few thing, words, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you very much, and sorry for the disturbances during the time of presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you also for persevering, even though there were some technical uh, glitches uh, in the beginning. Thank you for sharing your the detailed presentation on the numerous research projects and the work taken up by the College of Veterinary Sciences and Animal Husbandry. Uh, I actually know of some aspiring entrepreneurs who have benefited greatly from the training and mentoring from the folks at the Vetti College. All right, so this brings us to a close of our program for today. Uh, to deliver the vote of thanks, we would like to invite uh, Mr. Samuel Lalmal Soma, Senior Scientific Officer and Coordinator uh, from Mizoram. Pumal Soma, over to you. Once again, we would like to invite Pumal Soma, Pumal Soma, to deliver the vote of thanks. 
Yeah, am I audible? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mimi. Yes, sir. Uh, very good afternoon to you all. As we come to the end of a very successful and fruitful meeting, it would not be appropriate to end it abruptly without proposing a formal vote of thanks to the organizers, all the speakers, and all the participants uh, who have come together to celebrate this uh, 75th year of independence uh, to begin itself, the Festival of Science. First of all, I'd like to thank our chief guest, uh, our Secretary Planning Department, Government of Mizoram, uh, Mr. Lorna Somapacho, IRS, for his sparing his valuable time and honored us with his insp inspirational thoughts. Under his able guidance, scientific bodies and institutions in the state like Directorate of Science and Technology, Mizoram Remote Sensing Application Center, uh, Mizoram Science Center, Innovation Facility Center, Petit Information Center, State Climate Change Cell and the State s &T Council are progressing at a very decent rate for bringing about promotion of this uh, STI in the state. I would also like to thank our chairman of today's session, uh, Engineer H.L. Somliena, our Chief Scientific Officer and Member Secretary, who has guided us all through from the very beginning uh, to the end for the success of this program. Then we are very privileged uh, to have wonderful groups of uh, speakers who are leading the top scientific institutions of the states. We all know Professor K.R.S. Sambasivarao, Vice Chancellor, Mizoram University. Uh, under his dynamic leadership and vast experiences, the ranking of Mizoram University has reached higher and higher uh, over the past years. Sir, we thank you for your speech and valuable information. The Science and Technology Department will be more than happy to collaborate with your institution in the coming years. And thank you, Madam Dr. Aisha Kuntala, Joint Director, Mizoram Center, ICAR, North Eastern Eurasian Fellowship, for your wonderful presentation. The ICAR and its branches are indeed the forerunners who have brought the scientific knowledge from laboratory to land and to the people. And thank you very much, P. Uh, Bintan Pui, Principal Scientist, Mizoram Remote Sensing Application Center, Mirsa, for your presentation. We come to know about the numerous contributions and inputs of Mizoram Remote Sensing Application Center for the various departments of the state government and the applications for the upliftment of the socioeconomic conditions of the Mizoram Society. And thank you, Dr. London Tuang Bar, Dean, College of Veterinary Sciences and Animal Husbandry, Central Agriculture University, Celesi. Mizoram for inspiring presentation. We, the people, the Mizo people, are a living witness of the work accomplished by your institution and the services that you have given for the people, which are, which are of course, very obvious from your uh, presentation. And I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to extend our acknowledgement uh, to the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India's team, headed by Dr. Deba Priya Data, Advisor Scientist G, and Dr. Rasmi Sarma, Scientist F, and, their, and all their colleagues. They are the key people who have strategized and initiated this program and bring all of the states together under one platform. Thank you, sir and madam, for your leadership and inspiration. Last but not the least, I thank all the participants who have uh, come from far and wide, the scholars, the students, the institutions, uh, the faculties, NGOs, who attended this Vigiano Sub Celebration Program, and for your patient listening. We wish you all success for your future endeavors, and I invite you beforehand to join us uh, again in all the Begin with Star program to be held each month with different teams until August next year. Thank you all. Thank you. Back to Mimi. Thank you so much for Samuel. Um, I'm sure if uh, we were under different circumstances, we would have all gathered together at a wonderful conference hall uh, to, to share all this information. But I think it's quite fitting to leverage technology and gather together on the Zoom platform. 
uh, to kickstart our, our uh, program, this year-long program. Uh, so during our brief program today, we caught a snapshot of the diverse efforts of four of our esteemed STI institutions in Mizoram who are at the forefront of promoting science, technology, and innovation in our state. As Bulal Malsama said in his address, individuals are most important, but institutions are vital for support. I'm confident that with the continued efforts of the four STI institutions highlighted today, partnered with the continued support and collaboration with Mystic, we will certainly see rising innovators and scientists amongst our future generations. And after this session, um, I would like to announce uh, that Andhra Pradesh State will be starting their Vigyan Utsav session at 2 p.m. And all are invited to join uh, their program as well. Once again, thank you all for your valuable time and participation. With that, we bid you farewell and have a wonderful day. Thank you.